I had a client who told me this story. She was an English teacher and she told me this story. I wish I could remember the name of it. Anyway, it's a short story about a very small town. This is like a dystopian society and a very small town. And in this small town, what they have done is they have every year, I'm not sure the logistics, but what they've done is um, they every they put a boy, a little boy, when he's very young in a room by himself with no windows and um, he, they keep him isolated. And my understanding of the story is that eventually the boy dies and they, they will keep replacing uh, the, the kid in the in the room. Now, the idea behind it is that the boy is locked up in the room and he doesn't have access to sunlight. He doesn't have access to people. They will feed him, but they will barely that at the bare minimum, no contact whatsoever with anyone, no sun, no animals, nothing. But what they're doing is the people on the outside of the room, they're living in kind of like a utopian society where it's really beautiful and there's lots of food and play. It's almost like a fairy tale. And what they're actually doing is they're using the energy of the little boy as the kid, as an energy source. So everyone in the town is sucking energy from the little boy. And the, the older he gets, the weaker he gets. And he's not just getting weaker from lack of sun and, 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 and contact with other people, absolutely. But he's getting weaker because everybody's feeding on his energy. And the belief is in the town is that the only way that they can thrive is if one person suffers. The only way that they can thrive is if one person is miserable. It's, a, it's fascinating. And so the book is all about like um, that like moral question. If a hundred people are thriving at the cost of one person, is it worth it? Is that okay? Is that, is that what we should be doing? Now it got me to thinking like that story is just layered with so much, but it got me to thinking, um, how do we do this to ourselves? I had a dream very similar to this recently, which reminded me of this. And in the dream, a part of me was in the room, in, locked in a room, and it was my addict. I, it was like in the dream, I had locked away my addict, the part of me that ran my addiction, my addiction to drugs and alcohol and attention and all that, um, had hidden that part away, and that part was dying. That part was dying. And in the dream, it got me realizing like, oh, there is still a part of me that I ignore or hide or don't want to pay attention to. And, and it actually has a cost to my other parts. So it got me thinking like, there's been so many times I've done parts integration work with myself and other people. And we see that when we ignore or, or disengage or, um, harm a, one part of ourselves that even though it may feel like, you know what, I don't want to deal with my sexuality. I'm just going to push it down. I don't want to deal with that trauma. I'm just going to push it down. I don't really like that part of myself, but this, but I'm thriving over here. These other parts are thriving, but there's a cost to let's just use sexuality, the sexual, sexual part. There's a cost to that part. And eventually there ends up being a cost to the whole. Because in the story with the little boy, it, it was fake energy, right? They weren't really tapping into God, into their own energy source that eventually the whole plan went to shit in the story. So if you're ignoring a part of yourself to keep other parts of you going, like maybe you're masterful at work, maybe you're really good in relationships, but you're not good in work, or maybe you're really good in work, but you're not good in relationships, you know? and you're ignoring, we are multi-layered, we have many parts of ourselves, and you're ignoring that, or maybe there's a part of you, like a wounded part, the wounded little girl, the wounded little boy, and you've been ignoring doing your work. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Go so stuff, 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 and it feels okay for a while, but then there's a cost. It's like the when you put that part of yourself in a locked room, so to speak, with no contact, energetically, but you're still sourcing energy from that part because that part is you, it's part of you. Eventually there's gonna be a cost.
So here's my invitation. My dream was so um, illuminating to me. It's like, shit, am I still doing that? Am I still hiding away a part of my addict at a cost to every other part of me? Yeah, probably because I'm, I'm still, I still have addictive tendencies too. That's not all completely you know, healed. And I don't know if it ever will be. I still love and look for a dopamine rush, but there must be something from that dream. This part of me that I'm not paying attention to at a cost to others. So I'm going to start doing the parts integration work again with that part. So just begin to ask yourself, is there a part that you're ignoring? Is there something that you're, you know, even like a weak part of yourself or a part that you don't like, what is the, what is it costing you to ignore that part? What is it costing you not to integrate that part? And is the energy that you're in day to day full, complete, and where you're accessing all four cylinders, so to speak? So really begin asking your because powerful questions because, oh my gosh, whenever we think about it in the forms of energy and we're ignoring one part of ourselves and we're not integrating it with the whole, we're not operating fully. And that comes then fatigue happens, tight, being tired, all the things. And as a spiritual warrior, you, it's about really tapping into all parts of yourself, the good, the bad, the ugly, although there's no good and there's no bad, but you know what I'm saying, all of it loving all of it, transforming the parts that don't align or work with you anymore, moving on, growing. The world is moving like this fast. So the places we're staying stuck are not, it's going to become more illuminating and you want to be running on all your energy, right? You're going to be running on all of your energy. So begin to ask yourself, is there like a part of me that I'm like, hiding in a locked room for years. I was like, I called myself a social sexual anorexic. I just didn't want to deal with my own sexuality. That's probably for another video, but I locked my sexuality in another room, in a room and it didn't work. And there was a cost. There was a cost, a creative cost and all kinds of costs. So begin to ask yourself that question because you get to be whole. You get to be a badass spiritual warrior, which you are so that we can operate as our full light selves, our God-given selves, our brilliance. Okay, I would love to hear what you what resonated from me, uh, resonated with you from this video. And my name is Beth Osmer, and I will see you on the next video. Oh, 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 oh don't, don't, don't turn this off. So, in the PS, you'll see um, I am offering a partial scholarship to our seven-month spiritual warrior program. This is an absolute gift an absolute gift. This is by app application only. My guides have shown me that there is a sister out there that could, that gets to have this. I don't know if it's, if it's you, awesome. Um, but I am offering this as a partial scholarship. You get to fill out the application if this calls to you and then book a call with me and we'll go from there because it is a gift. And the seven month program is an incredibly incredibly powerful transformational program. So if you're interested in applying for the partial scholarship, click the link below and book a call with me, fill out the application and book a call with me. All right, I will see you on the next video.